there, and welcome to Storytime for Kids. I'm Mrs. McCurley, and today we're going to continue with the third story in The Snow Queen by Hans Christian Andersen. Be sure to subscribe. Let's get started. Story the third, The Flower Garden of the Old Woman Who Knew Magic. But how fair little Gerda when Kay came back no more? Where could he be? Nobody knew, nobody could tell. The boys could only say that they had seen him tie his little sledge to another fine large one, which had driven down the street and out the town gate. Nobody knew where he was. Many tears were shed. Sore and long did little Gerda weep. Then they said he was dead, drowned in the river that ran past the town. Dark indeed, and long those winter days. Then came spring with warmer sunshine. He is dead and gone, said little Gerda. I don't believe it, said the sunshine. He's dead and gone, she said to the swallows. We don't believe they answered, and at last, little Gerda didn't believe it either. Hm, I'll put on my new red shoes, she said one morning early, the ones Kay has never seen, and I'll go down to the river and ask about him. It was quite early. She kissed her old grandmother as she slept, put on her red shoes, and went out of the gate to the river quite alone. Is it true that you've taken my little playfellow? I'll give you my red shoes if you'll give him back to me. The waves, she thought, nodded in a queer fashion. So she took her gay red shoes, the most precious thing she had, and threw them both into the river. But they fell close into the bank, and the little waves carried them straight back to her on shore. It seemed that the river would not take the most precious thing that she had because it had not got little Kay. Hmm. But she thought she hadn't thrown the shoes far enough out. So she climbed into a boat that lay in the rushes and went out further to the end of it and then threw out the shoes. But the boat was not moored fast and with the movement she made, it floated away from the shore. She noticed this and made haste to get out. But before she could get back, the boat was more than a fathom away and began to drift more quickly along. Little Gerda was very much frightened and began to cry. But nobody heard her except the sparrows and they couldn't carry her ashore. But they flew along the bank and sang as if to comfort her The boat was carried downstream. Little Gerda sat still in her stockinged feet and her little red shoes floated behind, but couldn't reach the boat, which was now traveling faster. Both banks were very pretty with beautiful flowers and old trees and sloping fields with sheep and cows, but never a man was there to be seen. Perhaps the river will carry me to little Kay, thought Gerda. This put her in better spirits, and she stood up and for many hours gazed at the pretty banks. At last, she came to a large cherry orchard in which there was a little house with quaint blue and red windows. And for the rest, a thatched roof and outside two wooden soldiers who were shouldering arms for everyone who came sailing by. Gerda called to them, thinking they were alive, but very naturally they didn't answer. She came quite near to them. The river carried the boat straight towards the shore. Gerda called out yet louder, help, help. And then there came out of the house a very old woman. Supporting herself on a crooked stick, she had a large sun hat on, painted with the most splendid flowers. 
Poor dear little child, said the old woman. However, did you get out here on this great big river, far out into the wide world? And with that, the old woman stepped into the water and hooked her stick fast to the boat and pulled it ashore and lifted little Gerda out. Gerda was glad to be on dry land again, but she was a little afraid of the strange old woman. Come on now and tell me who you are and how you got here, she said. And Gerda told her everything. And the old woman shook her head and said, hmm, hmm. And when Gerda had told her everything and asked if maybe she'd seen little Kay, the woman said he hadn't passed that way, but he would come, sure enough. And she wasn't to be worried, but must taste her cherries and look at her flowers that were prettier than any picture book. And could each of them tell a whole story? Then she took Gerda by the hand and they went into the little house and the old woman locked the door. The windows were placed very high up and the glass in them was red and blue and yellow. The daylight shone very oddly through them with all of those colors, but on the table were the most beautiful cherries and Gerda ate as many as she liked, for she was allowed to. And while she was eating, the old woman combed her hair with a gold comb. And the hair curled and shone lovely and yellow about her kind little face, the round face that looked like a rose. I've been longing for a sweet little girl like you, said the old woman. You'll see how well we two shall get along. And all the time she was combing little Gerda's hair, Gerda was forgetting more and more about her foster brother Kay, for the old woman was skilled in witchcraft. But she wasn't a wicked witch. She only used witchcraft a little for her own pleasure. And just now, she wanted very much to keep little Gerda. In order to do so, she went out into the garden and stretched out her hooked stick towards all the rose bushes. And though they were all blooming beautifully, they all sank down into the black earth and you couldn't see where they had been. Huh. The old woman was afraid that when Gerda saw the roses, she would think of her own roses and then remember little Kay and run away. Then she took little Gerda out into the flower garden. Dear me, what fragrance and beauty there was there. All the flowers you could think of, belonging to every season, stood there in their full bloom. No picture book could more gaily colored and been pretty. Gerda jumped for joy and played about till the sun set behind the tall cherry trees. Then she was given a lovely bed with red silk pillows that were stuffed with blue violets. And there she slept and dreamt as beautiful dreams as any queen on her wedding day. Next day, she played among the flowers again in the hot sunshine. And so many days went by. Gerda knew every flower, but many as there were of them, she thought that there was one that was missing. But she didn't know which. Then, one day she was sitting, looking at the old woman's sun hat with the flowers painted on it. And the prettiest of all that was there was a rose. The old woman had forgotten to take it away from her hat when she got rid of all the others in the garden. It only shows what comes of not having your wits about you. Why, said Gerda, aren't there any roses? And she ran in among the beds and looked and looked but there was none to be found. Then she sat down and cried. But her hot tears fell exactly on the spot where a rose tree had sunk down. And when the tears wetted the ground, the tree rose up all at once, blossoming just as when it had sank down on its own. And Gerda threw her arms around it 
and kissed the roses and thought of the beautiful ones at home and with them of little Kay. Oh, how I've been dawdling, said the little girl. I was to find my Kay. Don't know where he is, she asked the roses. Do you think he's dead and gone? Dead he isn't, said the roses. We've been down in the ground where all the dead people are, but Kay wasn't there. Thanks, thanks, said little Gerda, and went off to the other flowers and looked into their cups and asked, do you know where little Kay is? But every one of the flowers was standing in the sun and dreaming its own story or life. And of these, little Gerda heard every so many, but none of them knew anything about Kay. What, said the tiger lily? Do you hear the drum? Boom, boom, boom. There are only two notes. Boom, boom, boom. Hark to the woman's dirge. Hark to the cry of the priests in her long red robe. The Indian woman stands on the pyre and the flames rise round her and her dead husband. But the woman is thinking of the living one who stands there in the circle of him whose eyes burn hotter than the flames, the fire of whose eyes pierces nearer her heart than the flames which will quickly burn her body to ashes. And the heart's flame perish in the flames of the fire. I don't understand in the least, said little Gerda. That's my story, said the tiger lily. Hmm, what says the bindweed? High above the narrow field path hangs an ancient castle. Thick evergreens grow about all over the red walls, leaf on leaf, way up to the balcony. And there stands a fair maiden. She bends over the parapet and looks down upon the road. No rose hangs fresher on its spray than she. No apple blossom, borne by the breeze from its tree, floats more gracefully. How her costly silken kirtle rustles. Cometh he not? Is it Kay, do you mean? asked little Gerda. I'm only talking of my story, my dream, the bindweed answered. What says the little snowdrop? Between the trees and the long board hangs in the ropes. It's a swing. Two pretty little girls, their frocks white as snow, and the long green silk ribbons fluttering from their hats, are sitting and swinging. Their brother, who is bigger than they, is standing up in the swing with his arm round the ropes to steady himself. For in one hand he has a little saucer, and in the other a clay pipe. And he's blowing soap bubbles. To and fro goes the swing, and the bubbles float with lovely changing colors. The last one is still hanging to the pipe stem, and swaying in the breeze. And on goes the swing. The little black dog, as light as the bubbles, stands on his hind legs. Boop, boop and wants to get into the swing too. It flies past, he tumbles down and barks. <laughs> He's angry. <laughs> they laugh at him and the bubbles burst, a swinging plank, a waving picture in foam. That is my song. I suppose it's very pretty, what you're talking about, but you say it so sadly and you never mention Kay. What do the hyacinths say? There were three fair sisters, delicate and fine. The robe of one was red, the second's was blue, and the third's all white. Hand in hand, they danced by the lake in the bright moonlight. There were no elfin maidens, but of the children of men, there came a waft of fragrance, and the maidens vanished in the forest. Stronger grew the perfume. Three coffins, wherein three fair maidens lay, glided from the depths of the forest, glided over the lake. Fireflies flew round them like tiny evening lamps. The dancing maidens, do they slumber or are they dead? The scent of the flowers tells that they are dead. The evening bell rings out 
Ding dong! Over the dead. You make me quite wretched, said little Gerda. Your scent is so strong. I can't help thinking of those dead maidens. Oh dear, is little Kay really dead? The roses have been down in the ground and they said no. Ding dong! rang out the hyacinth bells. We're not ringing for little Kay. We don't know him. We're only singing our own song, the only one we know. <sighs> so, Gerda went to the buttercup, shining out from among its brilliant green leaves. You're a bright little sun, said Gerda. Tell me if you know where I can find my playfellow. The buttercup shone very prettily and looked at Gerda. What song now could the buttercup sing? Not one about Kay, at any rate. In a little yard, God's sun was shining warm on the first day of spring. Its beams crept down the neighbor's white wall. Close by grew the first yellow flowers, shining like gold in the hot sunbeams. <laughs> The old grandmother was out of doors in her chair, and her pretty little granddaughter, the poor servant maid, came home upon a short visit and gave her grandmother a kiss. There was gold, beautiful gold, in that blessed kiss. Gold on the lips, gold in the heart, gold up there in the early morn. <laughs> Look, that's my little story, said the buttercup. Oh, my poor old granny, said Gerda. Yes, she must be longing for me. Oh, and unhappy about me, as she was about little Kay. But I'll be home soon again and bring Kay with me. It's no good asking the flowers. They only know their own song and tell me nothing. So she tucked up her little frock to run the quicker. But the narcissist hit her against her leg as she jumped over it. And she stopped and looked at the tall flower and asked, do you happen to know anything? And she stooped down to it. And what did it say? <laughs> I can see myself, I can see myself, said the Narcissus. Oh, how strong my scent is. Up in the little garret stands a little ballet girl, half dressed, standing first on one leg. She is then on both and kicking out, kick, kick at the whole world. She's only an illusion. She's pouring water out of a teapot onto a bit of stuff that she's holding. It's her stays. Cleanliness is a good thing. Cleanliness is a good thing. The white frock hangs on its peg. It too has been washed in the teapot and dried on the roof. She puts it on and a saffron yellow kerchief about her neck, which makes the dress shine whiter. Legs up in the air, legs up in the air. Look how she stands on a stalk. I can see myself, I can see myself. I don't care about that in the least, said Gerda. It's no use telling me that. Oh. So she ran to the border of the garden. The door was locked, but she twisted at the rusty stake till it came away and the door flew open. And then out ran little Gerda, barefoot into the wide world. Thrice she looked back, but there was nobody coming after her. At last she could run no further and sat down on a big stone. And when she looked about her, why, summer was over, and it was late autumn. You couldn't see that inside the beautiful garden, where there was always sunshine and always flowers blooming. Good heavens, how I've dawdled, said Gerda. It's autumn now. I daren't rest a minute. So she got up and went on. Oh, how bruised and tired were her little feet, and how cold and raw it was, just all around. The long leaves of the willow were pale yellow, and the mist dripped off them in dewdrops. One leaf after another fell, and only the slow bush had kept its fruit, sour fruit, mm, that dried up in your mouth. Oh, how gray and dismal it was out in the wide world. And that is the end of story three of The Snow Queen by Hans Christian Andersen. Be sure to subscribe and join us on the next video for story number four. And until then, happy story time. Bye.